Make your day right. Giliboni Online TV. Kupata habari mpya na kwa haraka kila siku, usisahau kusubscribe, kisha like na comment. Giliboni Online TV. Usiku wa kwamkia leo kulikuwa na mahojiano mazito kabisa ya kihoja kati ya mbunge wa Singida Mashariki Chadema, Tundulisu na balozi wa Tanzania nchini Marekani anaitwa Wilson Masingili. Sasa mahojiano yale yalikuwa ni katika kipindi cha Sweti Toku Africa kilichokuwa kinarushwa na television ya sauti ya Marekani voa huku kila mmoja akipangua hoja za wenzake. Masingili ambaye ni balozi wa Tanzania nchini Marekani amekuwa balozi wa pili kumjibu tundu lisu baada ya siku tano zilizopita balozi wa Tanzania nchini Ujerumani Dr. Abdala Posi kumjibu lisu baada ya mbunge huyo kueleza madai mbalimbali kuhusu serikali na jinsi alivyoshambuliwa kwa risasi zaidi ya 30 Septemba 7 mwaka 2017 wakati akihojiwa na kituo cha televisheni cha Deutsche Welle cha pale nchini Ujerumani. Kika kipindi hicho uh, cha jana kilichozungukwa na mtangazaji maarufu Shaka Asali kilichokuwa na madai ya haki ya uhuru wa kujeleza kilikuwa na uh, wanajopo wengine ambao ni John Temin kutoka taasisi ya Freedom House na mwanasiasa mwana upinzani wa Uganda Robert uh, Chagulani maarufu kama Bob Wine akijibu maswali ya mtangazaji huyo kuhusu uhuru wa kujeleza na sababu ya lisu kushambuliwa kwa risasi balozi Masingili yeye ma, anaitwa Masilingi amesema licha ya eneo aliloshambuliwa kuwa ni nyumba ya serikali lakini halina uhusiano na kubanwa kwa uhuru wa kujieleza Lisu alikuwa nchini Ubelgiji akipatiwa matibabu alikokwenda January 6, 2018 akitoka hospitalini Nairobi pale Kenya Mnadhimu huyo mkuu wa kambi rasmi ya upinzani bungeni nchini alipelekwa Nairobi akitokea hospitali ya Rufaa Dodoma baada ya kushambuliwa kwa risasi zaidi ya 30 mchana wa Septemba 7 mwaka juzi akiwa katika makazi yake area D jijini Dodoma akitokea kuhudhuria vikao vya bunge. Lisu ambaye Disemba 31, 2018 alieleza kwamba ameitimisha shughuli za utabibu na sasa anaendelea na mazoezi ya kutembea hivi karibuni. Alifanya ziara nchini Uingereza na kufanya mahojiano na shirika la utangazaji la Uingereza la BBC. Pia amefanya mahojiano na vyombo mbalimbali vya habari vya kimataifa. Uwezi kuhusisha hilo moja kwa moja na uhuru wa kujieleza bila kuweka uthibitisho. Ndugu yangu alishambuliwa na risasi. Mm na rais uh, John Magufuli alitoa tamko la kulaani tukio hilo na kutaka vyombo vya dola kuchunguza tukio hilo uh, bwana we taarifa hiyo ili eleza. Sasa ni wasaa mzuri wa kusikiliza jinsi ambavyo walikuwa katika mabishano ya hoja watu hawa wawili, balozi uh, Wilson Masilingi na mnadhimu wa kambi rasmi ya upinzani bungeni, mwanasheria wa Chadema na mbunge wa Singida Mashariki anaitwa Tundu Lisu. Eh, vile vile kuna maswali ya mtangazaji huko ndani. Kwa hiyo, ye, yeah, isikilize namna ambavyo uh, ilikuwa moto. Alafu utaniambia nini maoni yako? You cannot you cannot relate that directly without substantiated evidence with freedom of expression my brother was attacked we feel sorry for what happened to him our president expressed his dismay and condemned that act and he ordered the law enforce, enforcement organs to investigate and get to the bottom of the matter and they apprehend those who committed that criminal act against our brother everybody sympathizes what happened to him investigation is ongoing they are waiting for him to go back and make a statement which he is giving to the press and government organizations outside the country they are waiting for the, the, the driver the driver has to present himself to give a statement so can you be a judge in your own cause can you condemn anyone and convict anyone on that matter without listening to both sides Tundu, i, I cannot you, uh, judge on that one but how do you respond to that uh, thank you very much maybe uh, there are a few things that need to be set straight here. Uh, I was attacked inside a government housing compound, which, as you said correctly, is guarded by armed security 24 hours, seven days a week. And each apartment block inside that compound is guarded 24 hours, seven days a week. And on the day of the attack, during lunch break, in the midst of parliamentary sessions, 
gunmen followed me from parliament inside that compound there was no security whatsoever all the security guards had been removed from the perimeter wall from all the apartment blocks so these gunmen had complete freedom of access into this heavily guarded government security a government building uh, uh, compound and they rained me with bullets and they left and as we speak today not a single bullet was fired at the driver uh, or at least went into the direction of the driver is it correct? well he the, the, the truth is he was not hit at all that is that is the truth i was hit 16 times i have undergone 22 surgeries and uh, i'm going could that for be luck or could it be that uh, whoever uh, was attempting to shoot and kill you had a single target obviously i was the target but the most important question is who ordered the security to be removed from this government housing compound number one two this government housing compound is secured by cctv cameras they were removed immediately after the the, the attack and there is no word to date about those cctv cameras they were removed by the police that is number two so no one knows what they show because the, no one knows where they were taken to because the police have never said a word about where they took the cctv cameras from number three there has never been to my understanding and i i know this because i speak to people i speak to people in the government as well no one has been interviewed my neighbors i, I wasn't i lived in the same building with the minister for 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 energy medad kalemani with uh, the permanent secretary and the minister of local government with the former health minister Haji Mponda. Not a single one of my neighbors has been interviewed by the police. None of the people who took me to the hospital, my housemaid and the housemaid of the deputy speaker, I was, I, when I was shot, they also shot all the cars that were, uh, you know, in the, in the driveway, the, the tires were all flattened. So I was taken to hospital by the housemaid of the speaker and my, my housemate as well. None of them has been interviewed. I was in Nairobi together with my driver for four months. And during those four months, the Tanzanian police force, uh, med, uh, they sent reports, a request to me through my, my brother, who is, uh, who is my lawyer as well, that they would like to come to Nairobi to inter interview me and my driver. And we said, please come. They never showed up. So, and of course, after I, I, I was transferred to Belgium, now the excuse has become, uh, we are waiting for Mr. Lisu to return and the driver so that they can be interviewed. But, Mr. Shaka, with all due respect to my, my senior uh, brother here, a, a, a very senior lawyer in Tanzania, in Tanzania there is a law it is called Mutual Assistance in Criminal Matters Act, which makes provisions for uh, uh, obtaining evidence or suspects who run out of the jurisdiction of the Tanzanian law enforcement agencies. So they, 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 there is a law which would have allowed Tanzanian law enforcement agencies to come to Nairobi to take evidence from me and my driver they have not done so. The, the same law would have allowed them to send police officers to Belgium where I have been for the past one year. To date, they have not done so. They could have gone through uh, the international police, Interpol, because this was a, 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 a serious criminal attack. In fact, under our, our, our statutes, it's a, it's a terrorist act. I was shot for political reasons. It's terrorism. So they could see. have done they've gone they could have gone through the interpol to interview me and my driver so far they have not done so they could have sought the assistance of the kenyan government 
or the Belgian government. We have an embassy in Dar uh, the Belgian government has an embassy in Dar es Salaam. The Kenyan government has an embassy in Dar es Salaam. They could have used the good offices of our diplomatic missions in Nairobi and in, in Brussels to have us interviewed. Nothing has happened. I see. And finally, just to finish, finally, according to the Tanzanian police force, there is no suspect. They do not suspect anyone. No one has been arrested. And of course, since there, there is no suspect and there is no, no, no arrest, no one has been prosecuted or convicted. And uh, my brother here says the president was very uh, clear. The president has never, ever, has never, ever made a statement one way or the other, one way or the other, to condemn this public political assassination on a, on a, on a, a parliamentary leader. A, a Has he ever called you to never. sympathize with you, Not empathize with all. you? Not at all. On the contrary, Mr. Mr. Shaka Sali, it is on record because the speaker wrote to us, uh, there has been a huge dispute about uh, my treatment. Your treatment? My treatment. Who is paying the bills? They, 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 the Parliament of Tanzania should have paid my bills in accordance with our statutory uh, 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 provisions. Yes, and why can't Thus they far, pay? They have not paid a penny. And according to the Speaker, in Parliament, as well as in writing to us, the Speaker has said, Parliament cannot uh, foot the bill for my, my, my medical treatment because, among other things, the President has not given his permission for money to be released for that purpose. What? Now, now, to finish, under our law, the president has no powers whatsoever when it comes to decisions on medical treatment of members of parliament. <laughs> Make your day right. Gili Boni Online TV. Kupata habari mpya na kwa haraka kila siku usisahau kusubscribe na kubonyeza button ya notification.